Welcome to the Parkview Life Podcast, where we desire to see the glory of Christ among the nations, so we love God, love people, and seek to make disciples of all generations. I'm Chris Turner. I'm Krista George. And we're back for another episode. Yeah, I think this is our last episode of the season. Already. Already. Wow. The yep. season has flown by. It has. It's been fun, and I think we've learned some things. I think we have, but we still haven't really learned what to call each other. No. That might have to be punted Next to season. season two. So I think we'll get some ideas. Okay. Your ideas are welcome. Not necessarily accepted, but they're welcome. <laughs> we'll listen. So we're talking about neighborhoods and nations today. And so that is uh, going to be our theme for next year. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. And so as we look at what is our major point of emphasis as a church, um, I think it's helpful to delineate that into a phrase or something like that. And so, yeah, we're going to be looking at our neighborhoods and nations. Particularly, how are we a witness? and How are we involved? from our neighborhoods to the nations. And so if we're going to define our neighborhoods, Mm -hmm. how do we define our neighborhoods? Yeah. So um, I think our neighborhood, you could really use that in a, in a variety of, I guess, ways. Um, If we look at it on the church level, I mean, we could definitely consider the school as our neighborhood. You know, we have a lot of folks here in, on any given day, um, families that we can interact with, students that we can minister to, and that's our aim. I mean, that's our effort. Um, But it is true as well that beyond the school, we have a presence as a church here in our community, Um, and so we want to be a neighbor to, you know, all all of those folks in our immediate proximity. Um, But I think it's true as well that I think if you're a member of Parkview Baptist Church, um, you have a neighborhood as well. Um, and so even, you know, I'm the pastor here at Parkview, but I have a neighborhood that I want to try to be a, a, a minister in, you know, to preach and proclaim the gospel. So, um, so my neighborhood would be where I live um, and, and seeking to minister to people around me um, in whatever ways I can. Um, and so, you know, I think as we define our neighborhood, I think probably anybody in our church should really look at their neighborhood as where they live, the people so around them. It's probably fair to say that uh, that our church could be represented could be represented by even multiple parishes. Sure. Uh, as I know, we have people that live as far away as St. Francisville or uh, maybe Denham or somewhere down in Ascension Parish. So our neighborhood really gets spread out at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so we want to start in those neighborhoods uh, and then have a presence from our neighborhoods to the nations. Um, and so in everywhere in between. And obviously we're talking about nations as in other than the United States of America. Yes, yes. So the ends of the earth, I think, is probably a good way to describe it. Um, you know, uh, the, the Matthew 28, the Great Commission call, uh, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Um, Acts 1.8 describes it as the ends of the earth. And so, um, so, yes, places other than our own country. But I think it's important to note that In a lot of ways, we can minister in that way within our own country, uh, because if if you've looked around, you can probably look. You don't have to look too far to find someone uh, that would be representative of another culture and people group uh, that lives not far from you. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's more now than ever. Uh, I mean, it seems like when we were kids growing up, you know, for the most part, everybody looked like a, a typical, I guess lived on your street, everybody was very similar in, in dress or uh, customs or whatever it may be, and, and as things have changed, you don't have to go very far to see multiple countries represented in different heritages and all kinds of different things, so the world has come to us. Yeah, absolutely, and so we probably have not been as um, vigilant about being ready for that, um, but I think at the same time, um, now's the best time to start, so... Um, and I think we're called uh, in a lot of ways to do that. And so we have such a great opportunity. Uh, we need to seize on that opportunity. Right. And so, I mean, coming up not much longer, we're going to have an opportunity that we can give to missions all over the world, literally. So on December 13th, we'll be taking our missions offering. Sure. We want to encourage folks that that's one of the ways they can get involved with neighborhoods and nations before next year even starts. Absolutely. And so our our yearly mission offering, of course, 
uh, encompasses um, uh, local missions in the state level. Uh, it encompasses uh, missions on the, the scale of North America and um, international missions as well. So we support the IMB, the North American Mission Board, uh, or International Mission Board is the IMB. North American Mission Board is our, um, you know, uh, I guess North American wing of missions uh, for our denomination. And then certainly the state level, we support those things. And so um, the offering that we take up on December 13th uh, is divided among those different uh, efforts. Uh, and then, of course, if you give every week, I think the important note to make is that a percentage of that goes to missions as well because we support, through the Southern Baptist Convention, the cooperative program. Uh, and the cooperative program was designed uh, to be able to send a steady stream of resource to those areas, and we engage and support that. So, um, you know, we give a percentage of the offering that's taken up on a Sunday morning uh, or throughout the year to that. And then we also do the special mission offering. But yes, December 13th, um, pray about how the Lord would ask you to give, um, and then uh, come ready to do that. Well, I think that, uh, that this is a great uh, place to start a new year uh, because there are so many lost people uh, that we need to reach from right here in our neighborhood, literally. And uh, so we just need to encourage each other. Don't forget about your neighbors. Uh, we get so busy these days that we drive right on past their house, and uh, sometimes we don't even know what their name is. Sure. And we need to get out in our neighborhoods and get to know our folks and uh, yeah. share Christ with them. Sure. And so one of the efforts that we'll have uh, in this whole neighborhoods and nations uh, emphasis is to equip our members for what it looks like to reach out to their neighborhoods because they may wonder, hey, how, how can I do that? Um, you know, what, what are some ideas and those kinds of things? And I think sometimes it's, it's not zeal that's lacking uh, for folks. Right. Um, you know, they, they want to be engaged with their neighbors, um, but it's kind of like, you know, when somebody sits down to think of what their Halloween costume is and they just draw blanks on what, what can I do, what, what can I do? Sometimes we sit around wondering, okay, what can I do to minister to my neighbors? Uh, there's so many ideas out there, but we can easily get a block as we sit down and wondering how. So I would encourage people to be in prayer about that, but we're also going to try to provide, you know, uh, I guess resources and ideas and those kinds of things to everyone uh, to help them and aid them in, uh, in figuring out how they how they make that happen. Right. I mean, and I think one of the most important things that we all need to do is is be careful of our witness because sure. as we go about into the community, uh, people are watching us all the time. Absolutely. So if we're going to be a good neighbor, we got to be real. Yes. Yes. So Chris, where did the idea come from, this whole neighborhoods and nations concept? Yeah. Well, I think the important thing to mention is that it's it's biblical. Um you know, when we look at Acts 1-8, Jesus tells his disciples, um, of course, to wait for the Holy Spirit, uh, but he says you will see, receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And he says you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And so, uh, you know, lots of churches have had an Acts 1-8 focus for uh, missions and outreach in their churches. And so the idea of neighborhoods and nations is, is simply Acts 1-8. Um, how are we involved in all of those areas. And, you know, so when we just talk about um, John, who's a member of our congregation, how does he get involved in missions in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth? Because I think as we look at Acts 1-8, by extension, that mandate is given to us. Um, we're carrying on, you know, that work of, of spreading the gospel. And so how do we make sure that the gospel is known in all of those areas? Um, I think Paul demonstrates the beauty of that to us in his urgency to go uh, to nations um, and to get the word out, and so he engages in spreading the gospel. Um, so the idea of neighborhoods and nations is simply, let's go to Jerusalem, which is our neighborhood, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Um, you know, I think one of the, the most helpful ways I've heard it described is this idea of concentric circles, that Acts 1-8 really kind of gives us that picture, that you start kind of in a a local place, and you begin moving out from that. And I think the truth is we want to have a presence in all of those areas. Um, so we do that through mission partnerships. We do that through sending people. We do that through giving. Um, but we really focus in on how we can minister in those areas. And so uh, so I think a simple answer to that question is Acts 1-8, you know, is where it comes from. Um, and then we, uh, as we define what it looks like, of course, it, it kind of follows suit with that. Right. Well, in, in our overall desires, we want people to know Christ. Sure. Um, whether they're 
a child at school or they're across the world in Russia. Sure. And so uh, it's a big goal, big goal. And I don't know that it's accomplished in any short time period. It's, no. an, it's an ongoing thing. So Absolutely. And I think the beauty of it is we're, we're not engaging in this alone. Uh, the beauty of what we would talk about in partnerships is that we recognize we're a small part of a much bigger plan. Um, and so, but I think our faithfulness to the Lord mandates that we are a part of that bigger plan some kind of a way. Right. Um, and so... As opposed know, to just standing on the sidelines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because we could easily content ourselves with just being able to open the doors every week and, and coming here, um, worshiping, and then, and then going away. But I, I think that there's, there's a lot more for us, you know, to be engaged in in those things. And I only think that, I think that helping and, and taking trips to other places only begins to give us a much better and more um, direct focus on our own areas uh, by showing us things that we can do. Um, and so th- I think that picture um, only only reinforces the idea of what we need to be doing locally. And so, um, so and, and I think opening up that scope and, and allowing people to see that, hey, you know, we're involved in some level in some way in all of these areas. And so and giving people the opportunity to be involved in those things as well. Um, so whether that's through giving to support a missionary in one of those areas through a partnership, uh, and then maybe going to support them in the work that they're doing, um, or just be an encouragement to them uh, through writing letters and cards, um, praying for them. You know, all of those things are ways that we can be involved in the nations. It doesn't just it doesn't simply mean that we have to go to that area and actually be physically present in it. Uh, there are ways that we can do that, um, you know, without having to to physically be there. But we also want to take physically being there off of the table either, because I think sometimes the easy thing would be that oh, well, we'll send our money. And, and that's, you know, that's all we're going to do. Um, and, and in some cases, that might be the only thing we can do for some areas and for some people. But the opportunities are there for us to go as well. Uh, and I think those things only help us to grow and help us to, to hone even more uh, the emphasis that we're doing right here at home and right in our own areas. And sometimes as people do get to go and they're able to minister in an unfamiliar area where maybe there's not as much concern about well, maybe I won't see these people again or whatever it is that they do things they wouldn't normally do. And when they come back, they go, well, that wasn't so hard. Maybe I can do that in my community and maybe I can reproduce those, sure. uh, those methods and, and see yeah. some results uh, where I, maybe I hadn't thought of doing that before I went on this trip or had this experience. And so I know those are always right. uh, great ways to kind of help folks see it's not as hard as it seems. Sure. And I think, you know, a good illustration to, to kind of demonstrate that is, you know, if I'm driving a street every day, um, driving 50 miles an hour, um, it looks a certain way driving 50 miles an hour. But if I were to walk that street instead of driving it at 50 miles an hour and walk it at maybe four miles an hour, I'm going to see some things that I don't usually see when I'm in my vehicle passing along that way. I'm going to, my eyes are going to be opened to some other things. And I think that's, that's the value of, of a short-term mission mission trip, uh, whether it's to another city, to another state, uh, somewhere across the world, is it just forces us to slow down a little bit and look at things from a different perspective. In the same way that I think even going into you know mission focuses in our own cities opens our eyes to things that we never would have known were, were there had we not pushed ourselves to go. And so I think that you know, that's the beauty of those things. Uh, and just like you were just saying, I think, you know, it, it, it opens our eyes and allows us to see things from a whole different perspective. And so, uh, so that's the value of it. And in addition to that, supporting the work of mission that's going on somewhere. And that's why I really think that partnerships are the key in that. And so, um, you know, having a long-term presence somewhere in partner with a minister or missionary who's on the ground in that area, I think is, is a really good way of accomplishing that. Uh, because you're also making sure that that the work you're doing um, is entrusted to someone who's going to continue it, and if they leave, they're going to pass it along to somebody else. And uh, I think it's a very healthy way of accomplishing that and doing that. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, as we just meditate kind of on this concept toward the end of this year and pray about what God has for us, uh, I think He's going to open up some doors that we'll really be able to make a difference in our community as well as our state and and who knows 
maybe you're going to be called to go on one of these trips that we don't even know about yet. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. so it's going to be it's going to be a great year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so just, you know, I think that's the urgency. Begin praying about how the Lord would have you engage with the neighborhoods all the way to the nations. And so and everywhere in between. Sounds great. Well, I think that's another one in the books. Yeah. One season down, and uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to the second season starting soon. Be soon. I'm Chris Turner. I'm Krista George. Have a great day.